Hello, it's been a little while since I did one of my seven deadly sins of photography videos. So I thought it was time I, I caught up a little bit. And this is number three in the series. And it's all about the deadly sin of envy. Now, in the previous video, if you haven't seen it, the link is somewhere up there. I talked about the, the sin of greed. And that was all about um, gear acquisition syndrome, getting more and more kit, and how we get obsessed with that as, uh, as photographers. For some of us, gear acquisition syndrome and greed when it comes to our kit, it's never gonna be a problem. We simply can't afford to just keep adding gear to, uh, to our cupboard or our camera bag. But that leads us to this sin, the sin of envy. And how does that affect our photography. Well, the simple fact is we want to have the right gear. We fixate on having the right gear and we start thinking, if only I had that, I could produce better images. If only I had this bit of kit, I could produce better images. But that's looking at things completely the wrong way around. You'll never progress as a photographer if you are constantly looking at what you can't do. Instead, look at what you can do and look at these restraints, maybe the lack of kit, the lack of experience, as being something to spur on your creativity. Try and find ways to be creative within the restraints that you have to work with. There's a saying that um, necessity is the mother of invention. And what this means is that when you are up against it, back against the wall, you haven't got everything that you want. That's the time when we can really come up with inventive solutions. And if history tells us one thing, those sorts of restrictions often lead to a much, much better product in the end. I want to give you an example. It's the example of a couple of filmmakers. You may have heard of them, you may not have done. I'm sure you will have heard of their film, or at least one of their films. The filmmakers are Merrick and Sanchez. They had a very, very limited budget, and they also had very limited equipment but they wanted to make a film. They wanted to create a horror film. So what they decided to do was to use those restrictions as the basis of their film. They decided instead of having a, a big studio um, set, they'd make it look like it was a home video. They made it look like it was footage from a home video that had been lost and recovered. And it told the horror story of some teenagers camping. And this gave the film a very, very unique style. It had never been done before. And it was a huge box office success. It grossed nearly $250 million. The style they chose wasn't because they wanted to do it, it was because they had to do it. That was the restriction that was on them. They hadn't got the big budget, they hadn't got the big loads of equipment to do it. And if you haven't worked it out already, the film I'm talking about, The Blair Witch Project. And since then, it's been emulated and, um, and that style has been done by others. But Merrick and Sanchez were the very first to do it simply because they didn't let the restrictions that they had stop them. They used the restrictions to spur on their creativity. Ask yourself this question. What are the things which are restricting your photography now? How can you turn those around into something which will actually help your photography and help you take you work further. How will it make your photography stand out? Maybe you're someone who wants to do strobist work and you've seen how that works, multiple flashes and groups and, and all that. 
but maybe your budget will only go as far as one speed light. And you're thinking, how can I do strobist photography with just one speed light? Well, you can. There's lots of techniques you can do with just one light. So why not develop a style where your style of strobist photography is single light? Yeah, maybe you want a reflector. Maybe you want to use something else as well. But develop a style based around the restrictions that are on you. Maybe you want to do wildlife photography and the only lenses you've got, well, you can't really afford that magnificent uh, L series white lens that's 600 millimeters long that will take you right in close to the wildlife that you want to photograph. Well, think about how you can use what you have got. Maybe you've got a wide angle lens. Is there some way you can place that close to where you know the animals are going to be and you can uh, control it remotely? A remote trigger is uh, a lot less than uh, the cost of a, a 600 millimeter lens. And using a wide angle lens in close will give an intimate style to your images. Something that will make your images stand out from the crowd. You're creating your style. It's not just gear that we as photographers can be envious of. We can be envious of the skills and abilities of other photographers. We look at their images and think, I wish I could produce images like that. And that leads to two traps. The first trap is to feel disheartened and discouraged and to have a lack of confidence in your own work. Now, I've spoken about this in a different video called Imposter Syndrome, link somewhere up there. Well worth having a look at that one if you haven't seen it already. So I give some real practical advice on how to deal with it. But when you look at other photographers' images, don't fall into the trap of feeling, I can never do that because Remember, they all started somewhere. They made mistakes too. They started producing rubbish images. They had to learn their skills. And they made their mistakes by getting it wrong. And the thing was, getting it wrong didn't stop them. They carried on. They made bad images. I make bad images. Every photographer makes bad images. What's the difference between a pro and an amateur? Well, the professional doesn't show his bad images. You only see the ones that have worked. I never show you the, the sunset images that don't work. I show you the ones that do and tell you how I created them. How do you avoid falling into this trap? Well, take a long look at the images that your photographers that you want to emulate have made. Try and work out how they've created them. What did they do with the lighting? How did they compose it? How did they arrange people? All those questions. And then you try it yourself. Try and emulate, try to recreate that image with whatever restrictions you have and see how close you can get to it. This isn't about ripping off their images and their ideas. This is about using them for inspiration. It's about learning from them. And as you try to recreate those images, you are going to learn the skills that that photographer needed and that that photographer has. But be careful. Don't fall into the second trap. The second trap is that you stop at just emulating your heroes and not developing your own style. Yes, by all means, copy, the, copy your hero photographers, reproduce their images, be inspired by their work. Oh, and for the record, I have got no problem with you looking at my images and trying to copy them and recreate them. But don't stop there. The trick in all this is to go beyond emulating your heroes. Go beyond emulating the images you have picked. Once you've created an image, look at it and think, well, that's their style. How can I make this my 
image? How can I do my twist on it? How can I make it something that's unique to me? Now that might be just to change the composition a little. It may, may be to change the lighting a little. It may be how you process it in post-production. It could be any of those. But make it your version so that anyone else looking at it knows this might be inspired by somebody else, but it is your image that they're looking at. Remember, you are you and celebrate what makes you different. Make sure that you come up with something that's unique to you. Use others as that, that springboard. Don't try to be the next whoever. One of my photographic heroes is the travel photographer uh, Steve McCurry. Um, if you don't know who he is, he's the person who did the, the famous Afghan girl image on the, uh, the, uh, the cover of National Geographic. Would I like to emulate what he can do? Would I like to produce images similar to what he's done? Absolutely. Would I like to be the next Steve Curry? Absolutely not. I want to be the first Ian M. Butterfield. Don't envy other photographers for what they can do. Celebrate what makes you, you. Use others as your inspiration. And remember, you are an individual. If you want to see my other seven deadly sins of photography uh, videos, you'll find them in the playlist up here. And the, the one on greed is linked down here. So go and take a look at those. I'll see you in those videos. And until then, keep making great photos. Bye for now.